to another episode of We Did That Shit Podcast, where we talk about who did some shit, what we learned from shit, and how we got through some shit. I'm Maya. And I'm the B. Podcast family, we appreciate you, and we hope your week was the shit. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If you enjoy our company, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, and Anchor. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Hey. Hey, Maya. Hey, what's going on? Chilling, what's up? Look what I got. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I need some of that right now, too. You know what? You know I'm not a wine drinker. Let me tell you something. But shout out to wine. The shout out to them Germans because that Dornfelder changed your life, won't it? I was <laughs> like, I I really was sitting there drinking it, and I was like, you know, this is delicious. This is good as hell. <laughs> you could really turn into an alcoholic if you're not careful I'm because it it's like juice, and you so you just. Get a little bit, then you sip in, then you like, oh, this this is nice. Then you get a little bit more, and then the next thing you know, the bottle is going. And it's but like, it's not. It's not like people be like, oh, I don't like sweet wine. It's not real no, sweet. It's not at all. It, at all, and that's like because I don't like all you know them sweet wines to be like juice or whatever. But no, this is a German rind. I really love it too. I get a six pack every week. You know, <laughs> stop, stop by at the Wegmans, pick up my bottles. You know. I need to get some more when I come back home. But the only thing is I'm trying not to buy any because I know that I'll drink it. Um, And because it's it's a different type of little feeling than Mm -hmm. if I was just sitting up in here drinking some 1800 coconut, you know, you get a little more buzz with this. It's like a little light wine buzz, you know, a little mellow, Mm -hmm. right? But wine puts a lot of weight on you. So does it? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm already fat as hell. Let me drink this last bit. <laughs> <laughs> as I take this new sip, Woo, I ain't mad at you. How was your week? Um, my week was like every other week. It was pretty good. Uh, didn't do much. I had a date mm-hmm. this week. That went pretty well. It went real well. <laughs> it went real well. Why you say that? Ask Kyle and Erica. <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when they was tweeting like, where y'all at? <laughs> yes. That is why the podcast was late last week coming out. Um, because I had a date that lasted a lot longer than I expected it to last. Well, that's a uh, good thing. It is a good thing. It was a really good time, you know. And uh, I won't go into detail, but I'll probably have another date. Was he a gentleman? He was 100% a gentleman. He, he's, he's from the South, too. So he had that Southern gentleman, you know, feel going on. And he definitely did all of the right things. Walked on the outside of the street, sat with his, you know, I was sitting. I sat in the seat. See, this is these men. I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I sit in the seat where you can sit, where your back is not toward the door. Right. They, they don't want to listen to me. I sit down. He's like, oh, he's going to run to the restroom. Right. Mm-hmm. When I come back, I knew what seat I was sitting in. Mm-hmm. When I He moved me kind of like, oh, move to this seat. But I don't think he was really paying attention. So he went to the restroom. He came back out. He was like, oh, we got to switch seats. And I was like, I know that's the reason why I sat in the seat that I was sitting in, in the beginning. And he was like, I'm sorry. I I wasn't even paying attention, but that was cool. You know, I had no problem getting up. So, Mm -hmm. you know, he was definitely a gentleman held the doors, all all the, all of the stuff that the gentlemen do, you know, came, walked into the car, the whole thing. 
Yeah, yeah. Was he cute? He was definitely attractive. Mm-hmm. Tall. Which, listen, when I... For, when I, for real was, tall or Tim's tall? No, for real tall. What? For real tall. And because you know that Tim right. tall. That Tim tall, yeah. That thing, mm-mm. You be like five. You be like, how tall are you? Now nah, I'm six foot. No, you're five five. And you have right. on a pair of teens. And it gave you the little boost. Right. No, but he was definitely tall. Urban me. Okay. Taller than me, where I could put heels on. Oh, that's always nice. Yeah, so it was nice, you know. Good conversation. It was like I had known him forever. Mm, that's cool. Good time. It was a good time. So that's how my week went. Had a good date. Had some good workouts, if if you could call them good. And and uh, that's about it. How about you? How was your week? Ain't shit. <laughs> just. just. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Right. Just. So you ain't have nothing going on or Yeah, I got nothing. I, I got nothing. I just we can't shit. Just it was a nice day today. Yeah. <laughs> just That's all I got. Well, That's I all I got. It was nice today. Today was the weather was nice. Right. Yeah, like that that was it. So I haven't been sleeping and I mean Me insomnia is I can't can you blame it on the hour? I literally did not sleep Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. When I came home from work on Wednesday, and I mean when I say I did not sleep, I mean I was in the bed, room dark, no noise, everything, eyes wide open. Could not sleep. Well, I have chronic insomnia, so you know I understand. You know, I I understand exactly what you're going through. And I I have my little sippy sips. Mm -hmm. No, that don't always work. Still couldn't sleep. Wednesday, when I was at work, I was so tired. I said, when I go home, I'm taking Benadryl as soon as I get in the house. Because I don't like the... Benadryl will put me to sleep, but it's not always a good sleep. But Mm -hmm. I needed something. Mm -hmm. So I took Benadryl. I got a text at like... Eight o'clock, and I didn't get that till the next morning. So I was already asleep at eight o'clock when my alarm went off. And usually I wake up before my alarm. When my alarm went off at six thirty, I was mad as hell. Felt mm-hmm. like I was sleeping for fifteen minutes. I I I understand. I've been there. And now with that time change, it's not that you can blame it on the time change, but the time change has something to do with it, especially for me, because I have chronic insomnia. So when it's 10, I'm my body feels like it's nine. So I don't really go to real sleep until t- uh, 12. And then I'm up at, you know, that's how it mm-hmm. goes. It's just like, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Something's got to give, I, I got to do something to, um, One of the doctors that I work with says, you have anxiety. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I ain't stunting none of y'all. You know, like. But it's not about that. And that's what he said. It's it's not about that. Anxiety comes from a lot of different things. So it's not just about, like, work. Because you know how to turn work off now. You know, you can not take work home with you and stuff like that. It has nothing to do with that. Because I suffer from insomnia for the same reason. So, at it's like you can't turn your brain off, you know, and it's so crazy because you don't think that you're thinking about nothing, but you really exactly. are thinking about everything, you know. And I feel like if I get up and do something, that's just going to perpetuate and make it worse, mm. you know, and then I get mad because I feel like I wasted time. Mm. Like, oh, I could have did this, this, this. But if you actually get up and do it, you're just making yourself not sleep even more. So at least if I'm laying in the bed and it's dark and it's quiet, I have a chance right. to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. It's really terrible, but life goes on. I hope it gets better for you. I appreciate that. Because mm-hmm. I'm almost out of wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wegmans is up the road. but I know, but you said it makes you fat. I mean, well, I mean, of- alcohol makes you fat. It has nothing to do with just the wine. It's just alcohol in general. So if you start any kind of weight loss, whatever, they always tell you this: abstain from alcohol because it makes you it it puts weight on you. It I means added calories. That's all it is. But you gotta like figure out what you want your calories to come from because they're gonna come from something. Now, do you want them to come from the wine, or do you want them to come from? Something else. No, I'm good with the wine. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. 
just add them into your calories per day. That's all. <laughs> right. <laughs> so who did some shit this week? Well, um, our girl, Missy Elliott, got an honorary PhD from Berkeley Co- College of Music. Nice. Shout out to Missy. Well earned. That's right. Yes. She's the yeah. first black woman to receive the honor. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it's well deserved. I think when you look at her career and what she when she came on the scene, what she did to to change the industry and her dancing, her skill, you know, her creativity, all of that mm-hmm. in her music, I think it's really well deserved. I was happy to see that. I was too. So mm-hmm. congratulations to you, uh, Missy. And she's going to be at Essence this year too, right? She is going to be at Essence. Yeah. And I'm excited to see her because the last time we saw her at Essence, remember her performance got cut short. Right. And that girl sweat burned uh, my arm. <laughs> you remember? I remember, Maya. I, <laughs> I still have the mark. <laughs> I still have the mark. Oh, from my goodness. A grip of sweat came off of her forehead down onto my arm and sizzled. It's <laughs> my arm. Oh my goodness. Let's just yes. hope that this year is a better year because Missy is back and I don't need another sweat mark on my arm. Well, we're not gonna be sitting in that section anyway, so it don't matter what section you sitting in. If somebody could be sitting next to you sweating on your arm, burning your arm from the sweat. We're gonna make you a sign, you can pull it out your bag. Uh, we gonna make you a sweat shield. Just Thank you. Pop, pop it up like a fan and be like, "Don't sweat my way." Yeah, <laughs> that was hot. Mm. Yeah, that was kind of nasty. Mm. Mm, oh, just uh, got it. Yes. So, um, also, I wanted to make mention to our neighbors in Nigeria in Lagos. There was a, a primary school, an elementary school. Owen Nursery and Primary School. It was a three-story building, and it collapsed mm. with with people inside. They believe um, the death toll is only at about eight, but you know they said there's toddlers in the building. Um, they suspended some of the search and rescue. They said the last person they got out it was like three o'clock in the morning, and it was a, a grown man. And they do not know. Um, a lot of people are upset with the government because one the building was marked for demolition months ago oh wow but it was still operating as a school mm. um two there is no record of exactly how many people were in the building mm. when it collapsed so you know you want to suspend efforts but you don't know you can't even you don't even know how many people were in the building right um so you know my prayers go out to them you know, it's just another tragedy in school. And um, I hope that they get as many people out as they can. And you'll be surprised in these kind of situations how people can be under rubble for days and then they still survive. Yeah, which is amazing. The shop, right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that my prayers are with them. Yeah. What else you got? Oh, I wanted to talk about the Atlanta teen who killed three people um, while they were crossing the street and she received no jail time because of it. And instead she received a 36 months probation. Mm. This happened in uh, Cherokee County, Georgia. She was from Atlanta. So her name was Zoe Radon. She's 18 now. She entered a plea to a misdemeanor charge Monday, a misdemeanor charge. I said that correctly. Monday, Um, she, she entered into the plea because she said that she didn't want to put the families that went through the tragedy through a trial. Mm. Exactly. So she could have faced the 36 months behind bars, but instead she received, uh, probation, as I stated for the amount of time. And she has to check in from Texas where she attends college. She'll, uh, get her license back after a year. She has to pay fines to a foundation centered around um, combating uh, distracted driving. And so a judge, the judge that sent to her, Judge Island Jordan, he told her during the sentencing, he stated, you're pretty young. You got a lifetime ahead of you. I expect this is something you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life. Mm, 
So he turned her into the victim. Wait, wait a minute. She killed three people. She killed a woman. And one of them woman. was a baby. Right. She killed, a, she, she killed a woman. Her name was Caitlin Hunt, her three-month-old daughter, Riley, and a family friend, 61-year-old Kathy Deming. Uh, Zoe, the, the girl who did the killing, the murderer, she drove up onto a sidewalk because she was distracted from driving. She drove up onto a sidewalk and hit these people and killed them. And she said in her statement that they were crossing the street when they weren't supposed to. And they walked directly out in front of her car. And that was how they got hit. Of course, this young girl was white. It's amazing to me that these people, I don't know. I don't, you know, I've only seen pictures of her. I didn't see pictures of the family. So I'm not sure if the family um, is white as well. But the fact that these young white children are afforded the opportunity to commit such a heinous crime and still be able to live their life because a judge feels that they have so much life ahead of them. You took somebody's life, regardless of whether this is vehicular homicide, point exactly. blank, period. Exactly. And so she should have got charged with vehicular homicide. Right. You, you have people that are in prison for life sentences for but bags less. of marijuana. Exactly. You know, she killed exactly. three people and a baby. What does it say? And what do you say to these families? What kind of life or what kind of anything are you giving these families? Because you say, oh, she has so much ahead of her. I expect that she'll have to deal with this for the rest of her life. She gets to continue on. Even if she was in prison, she coming home. These right. people, their family members are gone. You know, That's a child, a, a three-month-old three baby. Didn't have a whole lot of even, life. Exactly. Who didn't even ex get to experience life. You know, you're basically saying, hey, it don't matter what you're going through, family over there. You know, this girl still got to live her life. Should she be sentenced to life in prison? No, she shouldn't have got sentenced to life in prison, maybe. But she should have got sentenced to prison. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, she committed a crime. And if the justice system is for people, justice system being justice being the key word, then you serve justice. And this is no justice to the family. So, of course, the family was, you know, really upset. They said that they expected her to be punished for her um for her crime. And she wasn't. And they just feel that it's unfair of course and so prayers out to the family that has to deal with this but i just it, it's just another another story reading like oh don't worry about it you have your whole life like when manafort got sentenced and the judge said oh i He's never you, done anything else <laughs> like, exactly so like you've never done anything else this is your first time doing this and then what does it say to the person who did the crime it says hey i could go out and do another crime because i'm only going to get a slap on the wrist you know what I'm saying? I can be texting and driving some more because nothing's going to happen to me. I only got 36 months of probation. What's that? You know what I'm saying? Can you get your license back? And and another thing is, you know, people talking about racism doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, we make everything a black and white issue. I mean, black it people... Is. Right, black people go to jail... For anything. 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 And get time. Free wrong. Anything. And mm -hmm. they get time. If a black person, same age, would have committed the same crime. They would be under. The even to, exactly. Even to the same people on the same day. They would be under the prison. They would have maximum penalties. You have to learn your lesson. Mm -hmm. How dare you do this? Isn't but and for people who exist. say, and I was going to say, for people who say that racism doesn't exist or that everything is not about race, you're crazy, you know, and Absolutely. you hate to be the person that says everything is about race. Everything has something to do with race. You hate to be that person, not me. I don't hate to be that person because I'm a realist. I know what happens, but people hate to be that person. But it's it's a reality. It keeps being a reality that we have to face. And it's just a sad state of affairs. But let's get on to the meat and potatoes of what's going on in, in, 
with the shits, <laughs> uh, with this cheating scandal that's all over the news that Girl, uh, I has. Bet going, I, I bet he's he going to jail. Uh, but wait a minute. Desperate Housewives. I mean, but wait a minute. This to me, this is the funniest thing because the woman from Desperate Housewives. You know she's married to Frank Gallagher. Yes, and, and this is some definitely Frank, some Frank Gallagher, Gallagher shit. stuff. <laughs> this is this is written. This is from the script of Shameless. Uh, this is definitely this is from so, the script of this is so Shameless. Frank Gallagher. It ain't even funny, and that is so funny to me. Like, oh, and they got this. Oh, he knew exactly what to do, and mm-hmm. he ain't getting locked up for it. Mm-mm. That's Frank. Mm-mm. <laughs> So it was a massive cheating uh, college admission scandal that broke earlier this week. They said it's thought to be the biggest college scandal uh, prosecuted in the United States. Uh, it, it, and, and CNN said that it's a harsh reminder that wealthy families can cheat their way to even greater privilege. And I was right. like, wow, even cheap. greater, right? Even greater privilege than right. they already have. Uh so who was involved? 50 people took part in the scheme mm. that involved either cheating on standardized tests or bribing right. college coaches and school officials to accept students as college athletes, even if the student had never played sports. Right. You on the, now you on the road team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, do uh, you know, the big names that came out was actress Lori. What is her name? Law? How do you pronounce her last name? Uh, Becky. Aunt Becky from Full House <laughs> and Felicity Hoffman, uh, who played on Desperate Housewives. That's what right. people like really know her from. But she was in a bunch of other movies, and you know the designer Massimo. Yes. Yes. So she's he he's married, married to Aunt, Aunt Becky. Becky. Right. Right. So he's in on it too. Uh, and it was dozens of parents, and they're all facing federal charges. Uh, other charges include nine coaches at elite schools two SAT administrators, an exam proctor, a college administrator, and a CEO who admitted he wanted to help the wealthiest families get their kids into elite colleges. Oh, he had he he designed his whole business mm. around this scam. The schools, you have what's it was eight school, I know Georgetown, mm-hmm. USC, mm. um, it's eight of them. What are they? Oh, Yale was on mm. the list, Harvard mm-hmm. was on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, the University of Texas, Texas, Austin, Georgetown University, Yale University, UCLA, USC. It's two yeah. of them in California, USC and it's University UCLA. of Southern California and UCLA. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But George oh, Stanford and Wake Forest. Stanford. Those were the yeah. schools. So yes. again, there are the University of Southern California, Stanford University, Wake Forest University, the University of Texas at Austin, Georgetown University, Yale University, and UCLA. Yes. And Those Georgetown, now Georgetown was the only one they got wind of this in 2016, and they fired their admissions person that you know, he was fired for this. So mm-hmm. this goes back some years. But as soon as Georgetown, of course, they're not going to make it public because they don't want people to know, like, shit happened. Right. But Georgetown caught wind of this some years ago and fired the person. It was, okay. I think, I can't remember if it was a coach or or an administrator that they said um, compromised the integrity of the school's admission process and all this other kind of stuff. So all of the stuff, and they're cooperating 100% with the investigation because that person Person at Georgetown has already been fired a year ago, over a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the ring leader of the whole thing, the the, the, the mastermind, the, the mastermind of the whole thing. His name <laughs> right. was William Rick Singer, and he's the CEO of a college prep company called The Key. He was the one that put all this together. Got the key, all right. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um. So they said that he had two kinds of frauds going on. Mm-hmm. One was to cheat on the SATs. Right. You know, and the other was to use his connections with Division One coaches and bribe to get the parents' kids into schools with fake athlete credentials. Like, he was going so far as to take stock photos of athletes, cut their head off, and put the kids' who was trying to get into the school's head on top of those photos and then giving them to the people like, here, here's Jimmy. Mm-hmm. They said some parents paid between 15000 
to $75,000 per test to help their kids get better school, uh, scores. Hooked on phonics is $200. And I was about to I say, like, what is going on? $75,000 to get your kid into a school? I mean, that's a little bit extreme, don't you I, think? I think it's mad extra. And I think that's a good quote, even greater privilege. Mm -hmm. But even the children, the children who are in these schools, they have... Uh, blogs and YouTube channels. And I mean, they out here. Now, the one guy was defending um, Frank Gallagher's kid was out here defending smoking a blunt on his YouTube channel, defending his mom. Talk about she only want the best for me. Mm -hmm. And and Aunt Becky's daughter had right, she don't even uh, go to class. Right, no, right. She had um a deal with Sephora. She had all kinds of endorsement deals and stuff going on, and they have since pulled the plug on all of those things since this has come out. So they both got arrested. Massimo and Aunt Becky, they got arrested. They posted one million dollar bonds to get out, and then Felicity Hoffman, she posted. I think it was $50,000 or something like that to get out. But everybody's going down at the they end are. of the day. And they need, and they need to go to jail. Mm -hmm. They need to go to jail. And, um, Aunt Becky, you know, she does a lot on Nickelodeon. So they just cut up her contract. She's done mm -hmm. uh, with Nickelodeon, but they need to go to jail because other things have happened nowhere near mm -hmm. this egregious. Mm -hmm. And there were black, people sent to jail yeah so these bring, people better go to jail yes bring in the atlantic public school cheating exactly. scandal. so you know back in when did that happen i think the atlanta public school um thing happened in 2011 that all came to a head that, that long ago? yo yeah it's a it's a long time ago because yeah, the people was like yesterday. yeah some of the people was like getting out of jail and stuff like that so yeah. so like i said it happened in 2011 they indicted 44 out of the 56 schools because they were said to have cheated on standardized well, tests. Test. It was a right. certain, it was a certain test called the CRCT test. And they were, you know, changing the results around mm -hmm. saying that the kids got higher scores than they really got. They indicted all of the people that were connected to that and they all went to jail. Right. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. And right. not, not, not no probation. No probation. That's right. Not near one person walked away. Every one of them got sentenced to jail. And they didn't get sentenced to jail for like six months or one year. They got real sentences. Like they, they right. went to prison. It's people for still cheating. In prison on standardized tests. And we know that standardized tests in the schools is about the money coming into the school. Exactly. You know, and so at the end of the day, you want to do better on the schools because you want more money to come into the schools. And that's the reason why they were changing the scores on the test. But every one of them, who every one of them was black, they all every went to prison. One. And they was and it wasn't nowhere near what these people were doing by bribing schools into getting into colleges, making these people athletes when they weren't athletes. Now, you know, when you're a division one athlete, if I'm they getting scholarships and everything else. So right. you're taking away money from kids who deserve to be deserve. in those right. positions. Right. And people really say that legacy is not a real thing. Like you have people who have become CEOs of companies, presidents of the United States mm -hmm. off of legacy, not right. because of their own merit. Exactly. Dummies, you know, right. dummies. Like we have now, right. right. Who don't know anything, who are being in these positions because of things like this. Exactly. You know, this man who was the ring leader said that he wanted privileged kids to get wealthy kids to get into these positions. I want to take it off of somebody else and put it onto these people. And then it just makes me so mad because you have black children who are getting perfect scores on the SATs, getting challenged into all kinds of university and colleges on their own merit. And, and challenged. People say, oh no, that can't be true. Right. Oh no. Something they has check to be our, They check our transcripts eight ways to Sunday. 
Are you sure you got these grades? Is this the official transcript? Was this envelope sealed when it got here? Did you take this test? Who's the proxy? Where'd you take the test? What time did you take the test? Did you eat right. breakfast? What did you do? Oh, you took this class? Oh, how'd you pass this class? You got this? Everything we do is challenged in question. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. That saying that we have to work twice as hard to get the least amount of things is so true. It's so it is. true. It's, it's, it's really a sad state of affairs and it's ridiculous that, you know, we as a people have to suffer through things like this. And it really is mind boggling to me because like you took away education for us because from us, because you knew how smart we were. We dominate in every single thing. You know, we dominate in sports. We dominate in education. We dominate in anything that you can imagine. We dominate in, and you know that. And that's the reason why you try and keep us down as a people, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, then we have things like this and people were acting like they were so shocked at this. And I'm thinking to myself, like, is this shocking right nothing about this at all we don't know that this has been going on for years and years you finally have a whistleblower who blew the whistle on this and that's because white people get greedy you know you get greedy you you get away with one thing and then you just want to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger so you had one whistleblower but this kind of stuff has been going on for the since the test of time Mm-hmm. We had to create HBCUs for a reason. Exactly. You know, we exactly. We, we, people say, "Oh, they say things about HBCUs." HBCUs would not be we here if we didn't right. need them to be. You exactly. know, they wouldn't be in. We we didn't have to if we didn't have to create our own uh, opportunities, our own universities, just for our children to learn. We we wouldn't, but we had to because of things like this. You know, we don't get a chance to be anywhere on our own merit. We don't. It is. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's really is a sad shame. And I'm going to, I want to follow this story because I want to know what happens. I want to know what happens too. They better go to jail. They (laughs) No, but, but again, I, we talked about a story earlier where this girl killed three people and she got probation. Mm -hmm. So for people who are wealthy people not to go to prison, if they don't, I won't be surprised. It's just, it's just crazy. So moving on, because we wanted to talk about, you know, it's now time for March Madness. And I remember this was a time where, you know, Deja got her lowest grades of the year mm-hmm. because this girl couldn't function. She was coming home watching every game. Talking about post high school options. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I know a lot of people, you know, their kids are graduating and they always feel like, I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, they're going to go to college. There's a lot of people who are sending children to college who their children are the first in their family still to go to college. And I think that there's a lot of buzz about college as well, but that is not your only post high school option. Mm -hmm. And I also feel that post high school options, you shouldn't be talking about them in the 12th grade. You really need to start once your kid gets out of the eighth grade, That's when you start talking about post high school options because high school flies by Mm -hmm. number one, like a blink of eye. It it flies right, and then life happens. College isn't for everybody. Say that again because these people that were in this cheating scandal they should realize this college is clearly not for your children. Clearly, they dumb as hell, Mm -hmm. but any you know, I mean, so college is not for everyone and. If you choose, I've seen this happen so many times, people forcing their kids to go to college or getting going to college, not really knowing what to expect. And then the student doesn't finish and then you still owe the money because, mm-hmm. you know, they don't play them. That that bill will follow you for the rest of your natural life. Mm-hmm. OK, student loan. They do not play whether you attend it or not. If you generated a bill, they want their money. Right. And they are serious about that. So there are just some things. The first option, of course, is a four year college. So right. what are some advantages and disadvantages of four year colleges? The oh, first, you asked me. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you went to college. I did go to college. Yeah. 
So, I mean, did you want to go to college when you were in high school? Yeah. I always knew I was going to go to college. Why? Just because I knew I was going to go to college. Just because education has always been uh, very important in our family. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always taught to us that, like, you go to college, you know. Um, So I just never had a thought that I would do anything else but go to college. But some of the things with the four-year colleges, and I meet a lot of people now, especially as a nurse, because a lot of people are like, oh, I want to go to nursing school, but it's expensive. Oh, I want to go to nursing school, but this, but that. Oh, I want to just go get my BSN first. I want to do this. And I tell, I tell everybody the same thing. First of all, know this. Nursing school is the whole entire devil. That's mm. number one. Th- that's number one. Keep that in mind. I don't care which route you choose. Nursing school is the whole entire devil. Mm -hmm. If you are high school age and you want to go to college Mm -hmm. and you feel like now when I was going to college, they told me that when you go to in order to be successful in college, you have to either major in something you really, really like Mm -hmm. or something you're really, really good at because it's not the time to be like, oh, I want to try this. Oh, I want to try that. Uh, because college is not easy. And more importantly, it's expensive. Right. But I have to say that I do think I agree with you. But I also think that college is a place where you can say, oh, I want to try this. Oh, I want to try that. And this is what I mean by that. Even though it's expensive, it is in in high school it's a curriculum you know mm-hmm. it's a curriculum you don't you can't it's not like you can go in there and say hey i'm interested in african american studies and they develop a curriculum around you it's mm-hmm. not like that it's a first through kindergarten through 12th grade you already know what you're going to be doing when you get and so so even though as you're growing up you experience things and you you're interested in things but you don't really truly always know what it is that you're interested in. College does give you the opportunity to kind of learn about this and learn about that. And while you may think, oh, I want to go be an engineer, when you get into college and you start taking different classes and you start experiencing different things, then you say, you know what, I'm, I'm really not into engineering. I'm into uh, mathematics, you know, whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. So I think that college does give you the opportunity to say, Oh, I want to try this and I want to try that. Well, I mean, I'm, I don't disagree with you at all. I'm just saying because Deja went and she changed her major straight away after the mm-hmm. first year. She was like, oh, this is not what I thought. I changed my major. My thing is, it's not for you to try this, try that at the sake of earning earn a damn degree. Yeah. You know, don't be trying this, trying that, changing, rearranging, trying, trying, trying. And now you've been there four years and you only got 28 good credits toward a degree. Yeah, well, that part about it, I agree. You know, like if you're going yeah. to, if you're going to experiment or anything, do that very early on. Right. So, to me, one of the disadvantages, one of the biggest disadvantages to me about um, going to a four-year college is money. A hundred percent. College costs a lot of money, and the American collegiate system is like the most expensive college system ever, ever, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um. A lot of other, some countries, many countries in Africa, if you make it through grade school, you go to college for free. And I think it's crazy. Just another way that um, the United States gouges us, like things like textbooks. They say textbook prices have increased at more than three times the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they know that if the professor says this is a book I want, then the people have to buy that book and they have no choice. So and then what they do is they keep they'll change a comma to a period and then say it's an updated version. And then you have to buy the new book. College is so, so expensive. So I always tell people there one, there's nothing wrong with going to a community college. A two-year college. Nothing Mm -hmm. at all wrong with that, because one is much less expensive. Two, you can find kind of guide your way, feel your way through, see what you want, or you can get all of your liberal arts requirements out Out of the the way way. Mm -hmm. so that when you go to the four year college, you just have to take those classes in your major, which saves you a ton of money. And that 
that way you can still, if you're young, you can still have the college experience at more than half the price. So I think that's a really, really good option. I don't, um, some people go to junior college and I didn't know until recently, there's a difference between junior colleges and community colleges. Yes. There's there's some real two-year colleges. And um, so, and usually they are less expensive. A lot of athletes go to junior colleges to Mm -hmm. build up their grades and to keep playing sports and things like that. If college is your goal, you know, don't be discouraged if you can't get into the four-year college of your choice. Yeah. You know, don't be discouraged because you can take time. You can go to a two-year school. You can build up your GPA, save your money, and you can still reapply to that school. Anything else on colleges? Yeah, I'll say um, just from my own college experience, I think that what you mentioned of kind of having a a goal in mind is important when you go to college. Because if I knew what I knew now, then I would have done college so much different than I did college. Um, I, you know, when, when you're talking about going to college, like I said, I think you can, you know, kind of find some things that you're interested in. However, knowing what I know now, I would have researched a certain career, you know, Mm-hmm. I would have said, let me see what makes money, you know, because uh, I feel like if I ain't interested in it, I can get interested in it, right. you know, <laughs> but you but you also have to understand what's important to you. Mm-hmm. I knew that making money was important to me. Being able to support myself in a certain kind of way was important to me. So while, no, I, I didn't want to become a lawyer. If I knew then what I know now, I might have became a lawyer. Like when I first went to college, I definitely um, kind of knew what, what I wanted to do. You know, I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do. And that changed a little bit, you know, while I was in college. But I would have researched that vision. I would have said, right. oh, you want to be a broadcaster? What's the chances of being a broadcaster? What do you have to do to become a broadcaster? What kind of clubs do you need to get in to become a broadcaster? What's the best area to move in when you become a broadcaster? What's the mm-hmm. best school for broadcasting? You know, things of that nature. So I will say, as far as college is concerned, I, you know, it's a twofold thing to me because where I do find early on, you can find yourself. I think that if you have an interest in something, you know, research that interest before you get to college, you know, because a lot of people that go to college, you don't have a plan Mm -hmm. when you get out of college. Right. So you have a want, right. You don't necessarily have a plan of what you want to do when you get out of college. So, um, research, 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 I would say. And, uh, what else would I say about college? Don't go if you don't want to go. Right. Cause it is a waste of money. And that's what, that's the one thing I told Adasia when, because we started talking about post high school after eighth grade and Deja never liked school. So mm-hmm. I said, well, you don't, and she was like, I have to go to college. I said, no, you don't have to go to college, but you have to do something in order to make a living for yourself. So mm-hmm. we started talking about other things that she could do that would make her decent living. So she wouldn't be having to live off of me, right. You know, for the rest of her life. And then she changed her mind in the 11th grade. She was like, no mom, I want to go to college. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to do this. And she did it. She did all the work herself. She applied where she wanted to apply. She got in where she wanted to get in. And I told her, I said, are you sure this is what you want to do? She said, yes. I said, would you do this? If it was your own money, Mm -hmm. you know, she said, yes. And I was like, are you sure? And she said, yes. And then she, so she went and she finished, thank goodness. And she went on to grad school. Now uh, grad school, I'm not responsible for that. I wasn't responsible for undergrad, but it's just something that I could do. So I did it, Mm -hmm. you know, but for grad school, yeah, you on your own bill. Exactly. So, um, the buck stops. Good, you, right. You know, good luck I'm to taking you. I'm glad you far. made it. Exactly. Exactly. And I, but I also <laughs> think that people it's very important. You know, I'm glad that you we are having this conversation. You as a parent who sent a child to college, with having the conversation of 
is it you got to do something because I think don't think that I think people just automatically say hey go to college but they don't give their kids other alternatives so a lot of kids don't know that there are other alternatives and then they go to college when they don't really want to go to college and then parents are, are are mad when they mess up the first year when they don't go and they don't do the right thing but you didn't give your kids the tools to say it's other stuff like trade schools Right. You know, trade school is very, yes, trade, a trade school is a very good option, especially if a person is tactile. And this is not just for young people coming out of high school, because these are things that people have to make decisions um, even later in life. Like there's a, a people who are older, go back to school, you know, mm-hmm. they have children, they go back to school, they work a job, they don't like it, they go back to school like me, I'm considering law school, because mm-hmm. I don't like I'm done with nursing. Mm-hmm. But you know, but nursing pays the bills, you know what I mean? So trade school is a very good option. There are things like, do you know, um, elevator, op- people who fix the elevators mm-hmm. is a very select group of people. A very select group of people, boiler makers. Yep. They make good money and all they do is sit there and wait to see if something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what you I mean? You could be, uh, you know, into um the HVAC. That's a good living. Right. You know, billing yes. and coding, that's a good living. People who uh, work in, uh, you know, do x-rays. They do, uh, you know, the ultrasounds. You know, all mm-hmm. kinds of things. It's all types of things that you can get into. It's all types of things that you can make careers you know it's Definitely. not just like oh i gotta go to college i gotta become an engineer and then i'm set no it's other things that you can do that you may enjoy being a carpenter you know i mean it's it's mm-hmm. so many it's so many being a builder you know um it, it's so many different things that you can do and i don't think that people always know that for one and to give their kids that information and maybe it's because they just don't know you know Mm -hmm. they say hey you gotta do something make money you know get out there pay bills do something but it's very important that we give um these kids the tools to know that they can do something else to make a a a good living for themselves exactly (laughs) when i was in middle school i loved shop i love we had to take shop we had to take wood shop and metal shop i Mm -hmm. loved shop and I couldn't wait to go to high school. I wanted to go to Vokey because I wanted to be a carpenter. It didn't happen. <laughs> Clearly. Because my dad was like, uh, that's right, Sherman Stokes, I'm calling you out on the carpet. <laughs> my dad was like, I'm not signing them papers. I was like, I want to go to Vokey. I want to be a carpenter. Mm. He was like, that's for people who have to work with their hands. You're smart. Go to school. <laughs> I was devastated. Right, you could have been following your passion and been a great carpenter. I could have had my own show on HGTV. Exactly. Oh, my dad owe me money. Come on, man. I and another been, thing right. is know what your kids' strengths are. Now, uh, fortunately for you, you 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 went on to do something else. But not knowing what your children's strengths are, and you're like, oh no, do this because you're smart. And People that are smart are carpenters. People exactly. that are smart, you gotta be good you know, at math to be exactly. a carpenter. You have to be good in a lot of things. Yeah. You have to know how to read. You know, you have to know how to follow directions. You know, have to have to know how to measure things. You have to know how to do a lot of things. And again, know your children's strength. Right. And when my brother Ethan went to Vokey, I was just looking at my dad with a death eye, like, oh, for real. Oh, he could go to Vokey. Oh, he <laughs> oh, for real. Oh, you think can go to Vokey? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was devastated. But yeah, so I could have had my own show on HGTV, but that's neither here nor there. So anyway, a trade school is a good option. Mm-hmm. It it is a good option for post high school. You can make a good living. And I also want to mention that we have to be because you mentioned like um, the ultrasound texts and things like that. We need to be aware of what's going on because, you know, every time we reach the goal and exceed the goal, they change the finish line mm-hmm. because now to be those radiology texts are being faded out. So you have to get a, a bachelor's of science in radiologic science now. Mm. 
Mm. It, it, now it's like a four year degree, like nursing school and stuff like that. So, right. you know, you have to be mindful that times have changed and technology and artificial intelligence are going to start taking a lot of jobs that used to be able to sustain a family back in the day. Mm-hmm. A, to- a toll collector was a good job. Yeah. But now they have easy pass mail people who work for the post office. Now, yeah, that was a good apps, federal job. Exactly. But now apps run our life. We pay mm-hmm. bills through apps. We have, you know, first it was online banking that took away some jobs. But now these apps are taking away even more. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to be aware that the options that our parents and our grandparents have, we don't have those options mm-hmm. because these things are going to be obsolete. You will not be like the regional manager at Blockbuster. It just ain't going to happen. Some people you know probably I mean? they don't even know what Blockbuster exactly. is. But yeah, so I you agree. Have to stay up on what is going on um, in these, di- just like you say, do the research. So college is an option, four year or two year. Trade school is an option. Also, if it's for you, it's not for me and my immediate, my children, I'll say. Um, but our family has done it. The military. Mm-hmm. It's an option for people. It is. It, now we're our, we're a Navy family, right? Mm-hmm. We're a Navy family. Everybody's mm-hmm. Navy, 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 Navy. Except Jeff. Jeff just want to be in all the branches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Jeff be everywhere. So you know, the military is an option. Yeah, and for some people, it's a good option. I think that some people, you know, I've heard stories of people who I know that have been in the military, and they say the military saved their life. You know, they were going down a wrong path, and then they decided to join the service, and then, you know, they they changed their life around. The military could lead to um, things like security clearances, where you can get uh, different jobs through that. It gives you a leg up on jobs, like if you wanted to be in civil service, um, if you wanted to be a correctional officer or a police officer or anything like that um you can definitely learn a trade in the military you Mm -hmm. can hone your skills in the military you know i think that the military is a good option you know now i have a problem with the military as far as like when you have presidents like who we have now and then you just go into war for just the dumbest things right you know or how they treat soldiers when they come back into the real world how they don't give them opportunities you know but um and, and, and so the military is a good option. You know, I think that people have to be realistic when they enlist into the military. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not for everybody, just like college isn't, just like a trade program isn't. But it's definitely an option. And when I say people need to be realistic, they need to know kind of what they're signing up for. But that goes back to what we talked about. Do the research, you know. Right. You don't know if something is for you unless you go into it. But it is there as an option as a viable option, you know? Right. I know um, some people who went to the military because they knew they wanted education and they didn't want to pay for it. Yeah. So and they, they help with student loans. Right. Well, they pay, they, they yeah. pay you, yeah. you get service back. And I mean, doctors, Right, you but know, you have to give them a certain amount, of, free. <clears throat> certain amount of time. And that's another thing that I was going to say. The military can, like college, can help you hone in on what your you passion you is. Mm-hmm. You know, because like if you want, you you may not know you want to become a doctor. You know, right. you might have had a, 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 a inkling in your mind like, oh, I like to I dissect things. I like to, you know, uh, tr- help people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when you get into the military and you see people in combat and stuff like that and you go to do more help helping and it home, you know, it, it, something in you clicks like, Oh, I want to do this. And mm-hmm. then you go into uh, becoming a doctor or, you know, you could be co- go into becoming an engineer. You can go into becoming an architect. It's a lot of different avenues that you can take and the military can help you hone in on that. Yeah. So it is a, um, it is a good option. It, and the point is you can make a decent living. You can take care of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, if you go into the military Also, uh, some people work right after high school. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, and this is just me, unless you have an in or something, like to me, it's not worth it to work if it's like a minimum wage job. Mm -hmm. Because you're not progressing toward anything. You're just in the rat race. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, you're just in the rat race. And I'm not going to like demean your job or anything, but you know, work and take a class 
Mm. or work and do research on what you want to do mm. or work and work on your art or something. Because if you're just working and it's a menial job and it's, it's difficult to get a meaningful job without an education or some experience. Mm. So, but I know people who do not have a college education who make a very living. good life, very mm-hmm. good life for themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you're going to work, you know, find something meaningful to do. Um, I remember um, I left my job because I had a, another opportunity when I worked in Africa, you know, I left my job because I felt like even though I knew this program was going to come to an end, it was only a three year program. I'm figuring with this experience, I can find another job, you mm-hmm. know, when I come back. But how often do you get presented with an opportunity, you know, to work in Africa? Mm hmm. You know, now when I got back, I was in for the surprise of my life when I was out of work. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness, I had to go, but I and I had to go back to school. And that's when you know they said, "Look, you have to go back to school. You your your experience now far outweighs your education. Mm-hmm. So you can experience great things, but you're eventually may need something to level it out. Um, you know what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with working after post high school, but it's going to be hard for you to work and sustain yourself. You're still going to be living in my house. I'm still going to be buying the bulk of the groceries, the toilet paper, the laundry detergent, the paper towels, the dish liquid. And that's not what we, that's not the (laughs) road we want to travel. You know, I I can support you as you're trying to reach your goals, but come on. Right. Um, And then the final thing is this whole gap year thing. Malia Obama did it. Malia Obama. I'm just saying. Me too. Like, what is this gap year? What is it that what is it that you have to think about? Like, well, I think that you have to think about exactly all of the things that we've been talking about. You have to think about if this is for you. Okay, I don't think that it's anything. Okay, go ahead. Who is going to pay for this? I don't have Barack Obama money. Right. I'm just saying, who is paying for this said gap year? Because gap year kids, they be wanting to do it up in this well, gap. Well, no, you can do you can do what you just talked about, work in your gap year, you know, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with taking a gap year to say is this something that I want to do? Reason being is because of what you started this conversation about money. It costs a lot of money to do any of these things. So whether or not you go to get a two year degree, you got to pay for it. You go to get a four year degree, you got to pay for it. Go to junior college, you go get to a certificate program, you go to a trade program. At the end of the day, it all boils down to money. And so if you take a gap year to figure out, okay, I, this is what I want to do. Because here's the thing. You could say right out of high school, I want to go to a four-year college. It costs $30,000 a semester, right? You better get on the scam. But, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You better do something. But listen, you, it costs you $30,000 a semester. And let's just even say $30,000 a year. So $15,000 a semester. Mm-hmm. You go, I send you to school. We get loans. I got to get a loan because they changed everything. When right. I was in college, right. you could get loans yourself. It went right. by your credit and right. you had to pay it back. Now, everything goes through your parents. So if your parents got shitty credit, you can't go to college. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they're not giving kids loans like they once did. They're putting it all on the parents or the guardian or whoever. So if I send you to a four-year college and you go there and you waste my $30,000 because this ain't really what you wanted to do, I'm $30,000 in the hole in in debt. When you could have been taking a gap year and you could make $30,000 you know, and figure out, okay, yes, this is definitely something I want to do. Then I'm $30,000 up because I know that you have went and you did the right thing and you got an education. So I think that it's nothing wrong with a gap year. I took a gap year in between my undergrad and my graduate degree. But again, I mean, it was a little different because I was working. I was was about to say, it's supporting yourself. Yes. But, but what I'm saying is, is that I think that I would rather a child take a gap year to find out what it is that you want to do, do that research and all of that stuff, than to go and waste my money. This is, and that is my whole point. And that's what I'm saying. You don't talk about post, and this is for a, a young person. 
not for an older person who wants to go back to school. That's my point. You do not wait until your senior year to talk about post high school options. You have to be talking about this stuff soon as they finish the eighth grade because those four years fly by. And I'm sorry, as a parent, your whole life has been a gap year, a vacation, because I supply everything. I pay for everything. And then if you get a little job, I even if you make $30,000 on your job, you're going to be spending a little money on this and that. Then you want to go out with your friends and you want to do this and that. And I'm still paying for you to live. So mm -hmm. you can take a gap couple days in them four years of high school to really think about honing and research or what you want to do. Gap year is for the privilege. I'm sorry. Now, if, if I had money to pay for a gap year, okay. Because I really, I'm one of those parents, I don't feel like I'm obligated to pay for college either. No, I don't. You know, I could. I mean, I did. I paid, first of all, I paid more for Deja's high school diploma than I did for her degree. Mm -hmm. That little school she went to, my goodness! You wanted anyway, to be all fancy. You should well, have had a. You should have had a scandal going on. <laughs> you wouldn't have had to worry about it. But you know what? I want this is a sidebar, and I might have to read more into this because did they have to pay for school once they got the kids in? Yes. Oh, so I tuition. had to pay seventy five thousand dollars for you to get in. You, you, I got to pay seventy five for you to get in. Then I still got to pay the two fifty that it costs for you to go. Right. They had uh, right. They had uh, to get it. And then, and then just it's so a, you could say if you, you if go I to could USC, buy you, right. but here's the thing: if I could buy you into college, I could buy you into a job. Right. I could just buy you into a position where you're going to make money. Well, what okay. they going to do? They only qualified to be on YouTube. And this is a side note to your side note because Denzel Washington's son got a full football scholarship. Earned it. Earned it. Mm -hmm. and, and Denzel went to the school and said, no, we'll pay. You know, another student can use the scholarship. And the school told him, no, your son earned that scholarship like anybody else. And they wouldn't take Denzel's money. But I, I think that, that I don't think that it's anything. I think that that's good because it that, is wonderful. He earned it. You know, it um, Puffy's son, right, Puffy son got a full scholarship to uh, UCLA for football and they took the scholarship. And mm -hmm. he said that's the reason why they took the scholarship because the son earned it. Mm -hmm. that's right. It wasn't like that was given to him. Exactly. You know? and, and he can pay. He could have been on in the bribe because he got the right. money to pay in the bribing system. You well, know, he, he could have been in a scandal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just saying, no, it just it just speaks to, you know, the integrity of, you know, Denzel was like, that's nice. Thank you. You know, but we can afford it. We'll pay for him. So another student could go yeah. to college maybe. And they wouldn't. They said, no, you know, he earned it because he did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they let him go to the school. Me personally, I'm not into the gap year thing. I think that's for the rich. I'm not rich. You know, and the rich ain't even buying gap years. They buying college acceptance. You know what I mean? So those are your options. And talk about them soon. Mm -hmm. You know, if your kid is in the 12th grade, you are way behind the eight ball. And if you are an adult, the same things apply to you. If you're an adult, you can think about how, you know, the route you want to take. When I became a nurse, you know, I did the cheapest route. Get me the license. Mm -hmm. I'll go back for the BSN. Mm -hmm. You know, because a license is what allows you to work. Well, yeah. So to wrap it all up and to just bring it all full circle, four-year colleges is an option. Two-year colleges or junior colleges are an option. Trade and certificate programs, uh, military, even though the B doesn't subscribe to it, a gap year, or you could just work. But all of those things you should be talking about while your child is in high school. And Don't research it now, right. Research yeah. it now. Don't wait because them ICDC colleges, oh my goodness, you know, they charge a whole lot of money. When I went to nursing school, when I was an LPN, I paid $5,770 for my LPN course. Mm -hmm. The same school, the tuition's up to $20,000, and that's still the least expensive program in the area. It costs a lot of money and you don't, once you sign the contract, especially these like ICDC colleges and yeah, they get uh, money. this institute, the Lincoln Technical Institutes and all that kind of stuff. Once you sign the paperwork, whether you start class or not, you owe them the money. 
and the classes are very, very large, and they usually graduate like half the people, but they still get the money because you have to pay the money. Mm-hmm. So please, please, please do your homework. Okay, I'm done for real this time. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for the week. <laughs> Do your research, people. Uh, don't be caught up because you probably don't have the money and to be in the bribe scandal um, and they cracking down on that. <laughs> Remember, all new episode drops of the podcast each and every Monday. But B told you in the uh, beginning, you can find us on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. Look us up. Hit us up. Enjoy the show. Uh uh-uh. uh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's the wine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Remember that you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Look me up on my personal Twitter. It's my my thirteen. That's M Y M Y one three. And I'm at Babi Amina. That's B I B B I A M I N A. So we'll be here same time next week. Remember, be great this week. Do that shit. I love you, Maya. Love you too. That wine got you going. (laughs) (laughs) I am feeling some kind of way. Like, hey, just all of a sudden. Like, hey.